No, hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, Corey. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Base pause. Hi, base pause. Hello, Venetia. Hello, Michelle. Hello. Hello, all my fellow cat lovers out there. Welcome. This is exciting. We're just going to wait uh, about five minutes or so until we are joined by Dr. Bales. But if you're just joining us right now, uh, what we're doing today is a Q&A with Dr. Bales. And she is a veterinarian with um, a focus on feline. So um, she'll be joining us today and we'll answer some questions for you guys. Jenny Honda is the best. Yes, Jenny Honda is the best. Hi, everyone. Hello, hello. Hello. We are excited to have you, Base Paws. This is great. All of our cat lovers out there. All right, and we're just waiting a few minutes to get started here. All right. Um, but, you know, we really are excited today to um, answer some questions you guys might have about some cat issues, some cat questions you guys have. Hello. We are excited too. Liz, you already know Dr. Bills. Awesome. Hello, thanks for joining. What are some of your guys' cats' names? I would love to know, you know, share some information about your guys' cats. Cat emoji even, anything. Until we get started here. All right, hello. Hello, hello. Thank you everybody for joining so far. All right. Awesome, this is really exciting. I know I have some questions about cats. I have a senior cat at home, so this is going to be, you know, um, enlightening for me as well. All right, what time is it? We got a few more minutes here. Yeah, um, cool. But in the meantime, so we really want to thank Base Paws and Healthy Spot for sponsoring our class today. Um, if you did RSVP on Eventbrite for today's event, Healthy Spot is sharing a special offer with you. Uh, with our class attendees, which is $10 off any purchase of $50 or more in store online or online on cat food or product. Plus, this is great, you guys get 10% off the base pause breed and health DNA test. The promo code online is HSCAT10. All right, and in case you guys want to take a screenshot of that, this is the promo code you're going to use for the really great offer that we have in store. Um, so the in-store offer and the promo code will be sent to your emails tonight as well. All right. And also, after the event is over, please share a photo of you and your cat or how many cats you have. If you're a crazy cat lady with nine cats, whatever, we want to see it all. Uh, please just share a picture of you and your cat getting cozy at home and make sure you tag at Healthy Spot and at Base Paws. Um, and that's really great. You're going to win a chance to win a prize pack that includes the Base Paws Breed and Health DNA test. And just so you guys know a little bit about Base Paws, they are a leader in feline health, providing at home genetics and biome testing with digital results available in weeks. It's awesome. Uh, Base Paws is the world's first home based testing platform for cat owners with results outlining your cat's breed and health predispositions. All it takes is a simple cheek swab. All right. And we will be joined by Dr. Bales shortly here. Hello, everyone joining so far. Thank you. Hi, Sierra. Hello, everybody. Yay. Hello. Hi. How are you? Hold on here, I didn't need to pick you off of. Hi, Dr. Bales. Hi, it's so Thank nice you for to joining. be with you tonight. Really excited to have you. Um, Thanks for having me. Wow, really... look at all these people. This is great. Yes, this is really great. There should be more coming. <laughs> Let's talk some cats. Yay! Super excited about this. We gotta, um, we gotta get you guys a new backdrop with a, 
maybe a little cat silhouette cat there to add to your <laughs> healthy spot. Seriously, can you get my earbuds off my desk? Awesome. I'm having a little bit of trouble hearing, so I'm just going to have someone grab my earbuds really quick, okay? But in the meantime, um, let me go ahead and introduce Dr. Bales to everybody. Again, thank you everyone for joining us. It looks like you already have some fans out here that know who you are, Dr. Bales, so that's awesome. <laughs> Um, but Dr. Liz Bales is with us. That's she cool. is a veteran. She is a veterinarian with over 18 years of experience uh, with an interest in feline behavior and environmental enrichment. She does work closely with Base Paws in providing cat parents with expert advice on feline behavior. Let's see if that's the long and short of it. I'm actually older than makes that. Makes a difference. It's 20 years. Ooh. that's better. I can hear you. I can totally hear you now. Much good, better. Good. All right. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, it's I'm older than that now. Like, the it, COVID has been like a hundred years. I I'm twenty years, almost twenty one. Oh, you're gonna have all the great answers for us with all that. I hope so. <laughs> I like being stumped though. I love that when I get a question that I don't know because that gives me something to go research. Yeah, you like a challenge, huh? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, again, we're really excited to have you. So we do have some questions that were submitted by our community. So if you're ready, why don't we just get started? Yeah, I just and I just want to say thank you to Healthy Spot for having me here. And I'm so excited to talk about Base Paws too, because they're really game changers for cats using DNA sequencing to not only figure out what breed your cat most likely is, but also to be able to have all that incredible genetic material to learn more about cat health and diseases. And now they're getting into dental health, which is super exciting. So yeah. there's a new test where you can swab your cat's mouth and the, the microbiome of your cat's mouth can help give a lot of information about their dental health. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to say thank you for to both of you guys for having me here because there's nothing to me more exciting than talking cats. <laughs> we thank you as well. This was really exciting for us. You know, cats are really weird and mysterious. So I feel like there's a lot of questions that people just don't, you know, have answers to. So this is perfect for that. So thank you. Cool. Well, let's get started. We do have some yeah. questions that were submitted by our community. So the first one is, my mom always wonders why I am very picky with food. Yeah. So this is a great question because it may, your cat may not actually be picky. Here's the thing. Cats are not designed to eat a big meal at one time like people are. So in nature, a cat will hunt, catch, play, and eat about eight to 12 mice every single day. And what that amounts to in the kind of food that most of us are feeding is two or three mouthfuls. So your cat may be actually self-regulating and only taking that appropriate amount at one time, many times a day. We like to see them tear into their food like a Labrador retriever and eat the whole thing at once, but that's actually not normal cat behavior. So if your cat's only taking a couple bites, but eating a normal caloric amount in a 24 hour period, your cat is actually the healthy one. Awesome. I think that's really helpful. I think that clears a lot of misconceptions about people you know, being um, confused about their cat being picky. I know I have a cat at home and that actually answered a question I had, so that's helpful. Thank you. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, our next question is how to handle a food obsessed cat when you have other cats in the same household. So I think a lot about this. Um, we tend to focus on what the cats are eating, but what we're really missing is how the cats are eating. Because when we talked about that hunt, catch, play with, kill and eat eight to 12 mice every single day, when we feed them from a bowl, we, we like to have a lot of heated discussions about what's best in the bowl. And we talk a lot about cats are our predators. But what that means we're forgetting is that they need to exercise their predatory instinct. So when we feed them from a bowl, we give them nothing to do all day, really, because about 80% of the time a cat is awake in nature, they're hunting for food. 
So the rest is grooming and, you know, roaming around trying to find a comfortable place to sleep. So yeah. when we take away their normal behavior, it actually makes them extremely stressed. And they, they have this drive to hunt and eat over and over and over. So when we take away the hunt part, all we have is the eat. So without meaning to, we've actually created food obsessed cats. So to answer the question, the, the first thing I would do is get every cat in that household hunting for their food in the house. And um, you can use the hunting feeder, which is what I invented, or you can home make things. I love puzzle feeders also, um, and I use them a lot. But what puzzle feeders miss is the seeking out and finding part of the hunt. They get the interactive part. So we wanna get all the cats in the household engaging in their predatory behaviors to find their food. And it's really interesting when you do that, a lot of that food obsession goes away. You might even find that the, once the cat finds and plays with a hunting feeder, that they might leave a piece of kibble. And you're like, what? This is the cat that ate everything all the time. But when they get to behave normally as it relates with food, then that obsession tends to go away. If that's not going away quickly, and that one cat is running around finding all the hunting feeders, what I say is give them some time alone, uh, alone in a room. Cats are solitary hunters. That's so hard for people to understand because we, it's a punishment for a human being to have to eat alone. But it's actually very, very stressful for cats to eat together. So you are not harming your cat by leaving the food obsessed one alone in a room to, to hunt by themselves. But what we see is once they all start being able to interact with their food, that food obsession goes away. That makes total sense. Same, it doesn't seem to go for water too, right? If they're not drinking water, you could hide water somewhere and have them. They like so the water the thing, I love talking about the water thing. Here's a few tips about water. Cats prefer to eat in a separate location from where they drink. Human beings like to set up our table with our food and our drink and our napkin, right? But for a cat, if I'm bringing back eight to 12 bodies, I shouldn't want to leave them near my water source. That's gonna be bad for me. It will contaminate my water source. So they don't know why, but they don't like water near their food. So if you put water in multiple locations away from their food, they drink more. Another great thing is to vary the containers. So some cats might like a shallow bowl or dish to drink out of. Another cat might want to drink out of a cup. So, or, you know, vary those in different locations of the house. And here's another really cool thing that has, is newly released and also re-released. Um, International Cat Care is a great source for cat information. And they just re-released their feeding guidelines, which you might be surprised to hear hunt, catch, play, multiple small meals a day. But when you do that and change nothing else, they drink more. There's something about the multiple small meals that motivates the thirst behavior. So um, there's everything about recreating their predatory uh, environment and having those resources to hunt for food and have the water in a separate location than the food makes them healthier in every way. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. That's a, I, I'm so happy you answered that. Thank you. Um, the next question. I can't get my, uh, my cat to stop playing in the soil of my indoor plant. How can I get him to stop? So my thing with cats is figure out what they want and give them something better that you don't hate. So number one, I bet your cat is really bored. Um, I'm guessing that this cat is not hunting for their food in the house. So the first thing I would do is get it hunting and get puzzle feeders. Every morsel of food should be an opportunity for engagement. And when you use a puzzle, I'm going to grab a puzzle feeder. Mm, the one I want's not here. Shoot. But when you use a puzzle feeder, they have to put their feet in and pull it out. So they're getting a lot of that behavior out of their system. Um, and cats sometimes need enrichment in ways more than just food. 
So scent enrichment with um, silver vine or catnip, or even that, that if this cat likes to dig, maybe give it a box of dirt that isn't your plant in a place that you can clean it up. You can even take a box, it's a little tough this time of year, but you can take a box and put some sticks and dried leaves in there. And then you can sprinkle catnip in there, or you can even put some treats in there hidden and let your cat play in and really use its paws to move through like natural materials. And you'll find that if you give them something better than the thing you don't like, trying to get them to stop doing something by like saying no. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to meet their need with something better that you don't hate. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> Instead of ruining your, your couch and your, <laughs> your yeah. potted plant. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. thank you for that. Um, the next question, my cat is refusing to use the litter box even though it's super clean, just because I left it dirty once. What, what so, should they do? I'm going to, the litter box stuff is really complicated. Human beings associate whatever the trouble was with the location in ways that may not be correct for a cat. So it's great that you have a clean litter box and cats really want that. They want the litter box clean, but there's so many other factors starting just with the litter box. Are the sides low enough for the cat to get in it? Is it in a location that's easy for the cat? You know, we, we really stop thinking about pain in cats, but many cats, even as young as three or four, have arthritis. So wow. is it in a location, you know, if we have our litter box in the basement on a shelf or, you know, on, the, on top of the washing machine or something, maybe the cat's having a hard time getting there. Um, so we want to think about, can it get there? Can it get in? And then does it like what's inside? So um, sometimes it could be that the, the actual, we call it substrate. It's a fancy word for the kind of litter. Um, it could have changed its mind and want something else. So um, you could, um, you could I, I generally don't say take it away. Add more litter boxes with different kinds of litter in there. And then here's the other thing that we don't think about. Stress from other things causes cats to pee and poop outside the litter box. So if you, again, what could be stressing your cat? We need to meet their minimum behavioral needs of, I'm going to whip through this, but we're going to get back to the same list over and over. Places to climb, places to hide, a way to hunt, an appropriate litter box, appropriate human interaction, and a respect for their territory. It may be that you got another cat around the same time and you think it's all cool, but cats, a lot of cats don't wanna to live together. And that's a big topic for us to talk about. Um, I don't know if we have any questions about that coming up, but if you don't meet any of those needs and the end sense of smell, so a cat's sense of smell is about 40 times stronger than yours and mine or more and they do not like strong scents. So did you all the, switch maybe the brand is the same, but the scent is different and now you have some strong smell? Or did you clean your litter box with a strong smelling soap, like a citrus soap? Uh, a, the less smells, the better. So okay. unscented litter, unscented soaps, uh, we can really wreck stuff. I say it's like being locked in the car with that maybe auntie that you had as a kid who was a little heavy with the perfume and then rolled the windows up. That's what it's like for your cat. That's really good to know. Complete, it feels like that's opposite from dogs. Dogs are more attracted to scents and, and things like that. So Yeah, and, and cats can be attracted to some things, but they're also very repelled by some things. Awesome. Great. I hope that helps um, some people out with that. Um, next question would be, why does my cat always freak out before the bath? Before the bath? Yeah. Because cats hate baths. <laughs> yeah. And they know it's yeah. coming. So there's so many things about a bath that is really hard for a cat. They like to play in water, 
but to be submerged in water is really hard for them. That That is horrible for most cats. Um, and uh, they really don't like to be restrained uh, kind of ever. So your cat's probably pretty smart and they know that if you're getting the certain things out that you usually use for the bath, they're like, yeah. Not again. And and the, the, the thing I want to say is you probably don't need to bathe your cat. So cats do a really good job of cleaning themselves. And they actually need to have their own pheromones and their own scents in the environment and not washed off. So I would love to find out why you feel like you need to bathe your cat. And maybe we can find a lower stress option to manage your concerns, that um, that we can take good care of your cat without freaking everybody out. Yeah. Would you recommend something just like wipes, like pet wipes, just to do their paws and, and things like that? I kind of don't recommend anything necessarily, except water and a towel. Scents really bother them. So um, there may be certain circumstances that they're concerned about that I don't understand. Like maybe the cat is having soft stool that's getting on the fur. Or, you know, maybe there's another issue that we need to talk about, but this, it seems pretty specific. Um, and I, uh, it's also something great to talk to your vet about, or you can send me an email. <laughs> awesome. Great. Thank you. Um, awesome. This one, it might kind of tie into what you've talked about already, but my cat has severe anxiety. Diffusers don't work and his physical exam came out to be okay. Any ideas? Yes. We have to meet their minimum needs. Places to climb, places to hide, a way to hunt, appropriate human interaction, so that's playing, leaving them alone and understanding what they, what they need in terms of alone time. Um, right. If you have a multi-cat household, it really could be that this cat wants to be alone and a respect for the sense of smell in the environment. And here's the thing, not every cat is going to ever be okay with people. And that is like a what? But they're not. So it's, we really have to understand what's reasonable to expect from cats. And cats have this window between about five weeks old, five to seven weeks is best, but then nine weeks, 10 weeks, you start to lose your ability to make them comfortable with human beings. And if this cat had a mom and dad who didn't live with people, and then we miss that window to make them comfortable with people, it might be that the cat's never gonna be comfortable with people. So wow. understanding what's reasonable to expect from cats is really important. It's like, you know, you're just not going to be able to expect me to run 10 miles a day or to stop talking easily, you know? Like there's <laughs> just some things that it's not, they can't do it. And it might just be that this cat isn't a people cat and that's okay. You can still have a wonderful life with that cat, but understanding what its limitations are. Great. That's, um, I, I had a cat that I was told was never gonna be a lap cat or be friendly and I adopted him and with some time and love, he ended up loving being on my lap. And just, so. Yeah, yeah, cat time and love can do it. But not all the time. And that is really discouraging for people. They feel like they failed. And you yeah. didn't fail. It, it may just be that that is that cat's nature. Right. And I would say it's also like for all these questions, and particularly a question like that and the bath cat, a feline behaviorist is something that we don't talk enough about. Um, there, there are veterinary technicians who have special certifications in behavior. And they're veterinarians who have special certifications in behavior. And they are amazing to walk you through different ways for a fearful or an anxious cat to specific to you and what your cat's issues are to teach you how to create an environment that is less stressful for them. And then have exercises usually involving food and play that are help bridge the gap and help them relax. Great, thank you. Um, next question, it might, it might kind of tie in too. Um, do indoor cats miss out on natural, instinctual outdoor fun? Yes, yes, and yes. And it's a really hot topic because we, 
every time I start to think, you know what, maybe we should just put our cats out, then I'll get a hit by a car. And um, it's, it's, it is dangerous. But in other countries, cats are out a lot of the time. So um, for me, it is, a, it is a personal decision, but it's also an educated decision. And what I tell people is that the, uh, the American Association of Feline Practitioners, who's really our gurus in, uh, for veterinary medicine, they say in, in urban and suburban areas, cats should be indoors only because of all the dangers out there. The problem is that they do miss out on those things. Um, I call it indoor osis. So they get a lot of diseases from the stress of the indoor environment. So for me, the answer isn't put them out and, and risk all those dangers. For me, the answer is build an environment inside that can meet their needs. And, and it's, again, we're back to the list. Places to climb, places to hide, a way to hunt, play that they like, a respect for scent and a respect for territory. And the territory is one of the hardest ones for people to understand. Um, we should, we should uh, hook up again and talk a lot more about places to climb, places to, like what does that mean for you and your cats in your house? And if I have five cats, what do I need? You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. This is a really good one. Um, I feel like a lot of our, our <laughs> both dogs and cats. So what's the best way to introduce my cat to a dog? Yeah, really slowly and really carefully. So whenever I bring a new animal into my house, I am like agonizingly slow about my introductions. Because with cats, it's sort of, you know, a lot of dogs can get over stuff. Dogs are like your friend. It's like, I don't know, you, you, you crashed my car, but <laughs> that things happen. <laughs> cats are not. Cats are more like, I didn't like you, I'm never gonna like you, and I'm never gonna try again. So <laughs> when we introduce new cats, we have to be really slow, because if we mess up and we cause a situation where they don't get along, or allow a situation where they don't get along, it's really hard to erase it. So, <laughs> excuse me, what I do is I would keep a cat in a room by itself for a long time. Now, I would make sure I went into the room a lot to interact with the cat. I would make sure that I have all those things we talked about, places to climb, places to hide, places to hunt, all that stuff in the cat's room so it was happy. But I would allow the dog and cat to get to know each other just under the door for weeks, if not months. And then when I was going to start introducing them, I would do it with a baby gate, separating the two of them. And I would have my dog on a leash, it, it, yes, in the house. So that if it got a little too much and I could see that the cat was fearful, you know, we're going away, good dog, and give the dog treats and let's go. And keeping it really brief and positive. So the first couple meetings are like 30 seconds, a minute. And as you see them be comfortable together, you can increase the time. But I would leave the dog on a leash with me holding it for even after I have them completely together. I would do that for a week or two until I knew because not, not every, you're not going to know all the things right away. Um, and, you know, under stress, animals behave differently and like, what is that? Yeah, they're fine until the doorbell rings and your kid cries and you break a glass and then, you know, that's just too much. And you really can't undo it for your dog either if they decide that that amount of stress is going to make them go after your cat. Um, bad things can happen. So I take it really, really slow and try to keep it really positive. Lots of treats and slow, slow, slow. That's really important to protect the cat and the dog. <laughs> so yeah. thank you for answering that. Um, I have uh, one question left. So how can I brush my cat's teeth? They won't let me. <laughs> so I think we should, I'll send you some YouTube videos. Actually, there's a really old one um, by the person who taught me dentistry who ended up teaching 
kind of everyone dentistry. Her name is Vicki Byard. Um, and okay. she ended up being the dental technician. I don't even know all of her certifications and great titles that she's had. But she has a video that's old on YouTube teaching her cat crayon how to uh, brush, the, brush his teeth. The thing again is slow. So if you think you're gonna get a toothbrush and brush your cat's teeth tonight, no. no. <laughs> it's, it's a toothbrush that they like, flavored toothpaste that they like, and then slow, slow, slow. So if you think I'm gonna start brushing my cat's teeth, cool, expect a month or six weeks until you're actually doing what you think is brushing your cat's teeth. Um, but that's way better than never. Uh, it's just using the correct technique, positivity, and slow, slow, slow. Okay, great. That's all I have. We're, we're just well, about the end of this, so anything you wanted to add or? Well, I, I can't wait to come back. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm really excited about how many uh, of your uh, Instagram followers are interested in cats. There's so much to learn. Um, and I love talking about it. So thank you so much for having me. No, we really appreciate you being here. So thank you for, for joining us. And thank you to Base Paws as well. Absolutely. Um, I, hope, you know, I hope our community got some answers uh, to some of the questions they had. And hopefully they can you know, get done what they need to do for their kitties. <laughs> thank but, you. Uh, I hope well, speaking with you again. I hope we can do this again and have a little bit more time to answer some more questions. I know cats have a lot of information so it's, it's important to get those answered so i hope we can do this again me too it was so nice meeting you and everybody out there take good care of your kitties thank you so much thank you bye dr bales appreciate bye. it and uh thank you to everyone that joined us today in the community again thank you big pause um don't forget uh as soon as we're done here to share a picture of you and your cat or your nine cats however many cats you have uh, take some pictures around the house of you guys cozying up together and make sure you tag Healthy Spot and Base Paws and um, you will have a chance to win a prize pack that includes that um, really amazing Base Paws breed and health DNA test. So, oh, you guys yeah. giving one away? That's awesome. Oh, and here is this one more time again so you can get it online and take advantage of the promotion we have going on, all right? Wait, so if I wanted to do it, I'm probably not allowed, but if I wanted to do it, how do I, how do I win again? I won't do it, but so, I'm just curious. So you take a picture of you and your cats and cat or cats um, and just post it on Instagram and tag healthy spot and base pause. It's B-A-S-E-P-A-W-S. And um, the, we will choose a random winner and uh, you'll win that prize pack that includes that DNA test. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. So don't forget to post a picture of you and your cat and tag all the things. Yep. All right, I'm and gonna check you, them out later tonight because I wanna see all of you guys and your cats. Me too, I can't wait. All right, thanks everybody. All right. Thank Good you night. so much everybody. Again next time. Thanks again, Dr. Bales, and thank you Base Paws, and thank you Healthy Spot. Have a great night, everybody.